Hi, it's Pete, Mindwise Man's channel, aka Maverick Outdoors, and today, Friday in March 2017, and it's coming up to nearly quarter to seven in the evening. West, so I've got maybe about this much dusky light for about another half an hour. And as you can see, I've set up my basher, which is my 12 by 8 poly tarp that I've actually made into a box configuration where part of the tarp obviously has got the floor and then the broadside wall and then a little bit of shelter but we're not expected or forecast to have any rain as such although um, it's going to be quite chilly later on tonight and there's forecast maybe some frost in the morning Saturday. I've got my 533 Coleman single burner stove but I'll probably knock up a fire pit somewhere down there so it's relatively in situ to the front of the shelter and it'll give me a bit of light and warmth, especially if it's going to be a, be a bit chilly and also I'm probably going to do some cooking on the campfire a little bit later on as well. I didn't bring my um, deployment bag, which is an all-in-one bag I've been using recently. I wanted to have a little bit easier to sort of manhandle taking single bags out rather than one big lump of a weight. So today I've brought me Old Faithful rucksack with all bits and pieces, all what I call me technical stuff and it had that food bag in there and then also I've got dry bag over there which has got my sleep kit and also some clothing um, for later on, some thermals. I can feel the chill factor getting in now so I think I'm going to go in that bag and raid it and put some thermals on so I'm nice and comfy cosy. Then I'll get some food out of this bag. So you've seen this before, I've got some fruit got some MREs there. I decided I thought I'd do some boil in the bag food. There's a uh, paella there, also brew kits in there. So basically I've got about four meals, breakfast for tomorrow as well, and then maybe a meal later on in the afternoon, tomorrow, Saturday. Got my 533 stove in there, and in that foil wrapped little packet are some large Argentinian they call them shrimps, but I mean, that size of my thumb. So they're like, uh, they're wild caught, they're not farms. So it's the first time I've actually had these. They originally came in this bag from a supermarket shop from the freezer. And as you can see, this is a vacuum sealed bag, which has got some marinade seasoning which I did once I defrosted them. But I'll tell you more about that later on because I think what I'll do is I'll cook those actually on the fire pit. So I took them out of the fridge, wrapped them in some foil just to insulate them because it was going to be a sunny afternoon today and I wanted to keep them as cool as possible. But even now the, um, the coolness is still there, right maintained from really when I packed them when I left late this afternoon. So really in principle um, I could sort of like keep them maybe until tomorrow if I did want to eat them tomorrow because the temperature is very conducive to actually um, not spoiling that type of food. On the trousers that I'm wearing, where my pocket is on the right hand side, there's a sort of a little loop that was stitched on them because they're sort of cargo trouser type design and this loop that's stitched on enables me then to put my sort of like EDC tag as I refer to it which has got basically my little torch, fire steel. There's also another little addition. I've used it a few times, but actually not out wild camping, but I'll show you what that does in a moment. Well, it's actually a lighter and a whistle and then tin opener. So I've got this sort of like hanging off that loop and then I'll probably just tag it into this cargo pocket that's on my leg here. So as you can see, it's got a little bit dusky. So the um light now is starting to fade. We can just about see there's the MRE boil in a bag that I'm going to do in my 1.6 litre saucepan on the 533 stove as I mentioned earlier on and I'll get it going with this little gizmo.
within about eight to ten minutes that will heat all the way through then I can just eat it straight out of the bag so it's really convenient so I've been able to sort of set up my tarp get settled because uh, I did actually set out um, sort of late afternoon I'd planned it since yesterday coming out here um, trying to sort of fit in a time which I could do so rather than sort of like leave it maybe for a nighttime paddle which would have been okay but then it would have given me less time because I've only got till tomorrow Saturday to have a bit of leisure time outdoors getting out in the canoe and they're just doing what I love to do hence bringing out food that was going to be convenient to sort of prepare and cook although I've got something a little bit fancy later on with those prawns uh, which I'd actually planned, I wanted to do, and it's the first time I've actually tried those. Although I've tried the marinade before, it's the first time I've had those sort of type of prawns and the way I'm going to actually cook them up outdoors. I've done it indoors before, but I thought uh, I'd just show an example of how you can actually do something that's a bit exotic, but you can uh, cook it outdoors when you're wild camping or doing your outdoors activities. So although sometimes these meal ready to eat pouches have got maybe a little sort of insert, where you then can tear it, but you can see I've actually cut it with my knife sort of lower down, so it's not as deep to get into. So it's a really sort of practical shape and space to actually eat out the bag. Yeah, it's still hot, very hot. <laughs> I can feel it on my hands, but you can see now it's easier to actually have access to get into the bag and have something to eat. What I've decided to do is instead of holding it or having to insulate my hand with a glove or something I've sort of like spread the bag out a bit so it keeps its stability leaning against the inside of the saucepan and uh, I'll just spoon it out whilst actually holding onto the edge of the bag while it actually stays warm and conveniently stays in the saucepan. Okay it's coming up to about half past nine at night so it's well dark now you can see I'm just set up to make a brew and I'm just using my through night TC12 V2 torch and here it is while the kettle boils really sort of hardy torch so I've just switched off my old faithful 533 and um, I'll give you a bit more spec of this torch in the daylight tomorrow but you can just about see there's the fire pit it's got about five selections, so that's on the lowest lumens. And now I'm going to take it up a stage. So now you can see the fire pit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go beyond the fire pit and beyond my pitch. And there goes the torch. That's the next. And that's the fullest beam. And you can see Pretty impressive. Obviously if that shrub wasn't there and those little bits of bushes and trees you'd be able to see much further. So there you can see my foot and I'm just going to gradually, that's the next one, that's the next one, <laughs> that's the next one and that's the fullest illumination and I'll just project it from where I've just walked. And there you can see my canoe on its edge, my shelter, and we just take it up the tree now as well. So it's really bright. So I'm just now standing in line with my fire pit. I've walked back to my basher, I'm just sort of about seven, eight foot away from it. But I'll put that on the next selection on the fire pit, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And that's the fullest illumination. So yeah, pretty impressed with it.
So I've got the fire going and uh, it's really glowed up nicely to leave quite a few bulky coals so the flames have actually died down and that's just the right sort of temperature and surface to place my 1.6 litre saucepan. So there's enough coals there that are going to be glowing away for a good sort of half hour, 45 minutes. So that gives it just the right timing to add those prawns in that saucepan. They're not going to take very long, not even five minutes. They're raw, they're shelled, de-headed, virtually all they've got is just the shell on them. Prawns, there's about 10 of them. Uh, I kept the shells on because they had the flavour while they're cooking, but I marinated them in the vacuum sealed bag once they defrosted with two teaspoons of soy sauce, uh, two cloves of garlic about the size of the end of your thumb, so it's like really nice garlicky flavour. Some sesame oil, which was about a teaspoonful, and there's uh, two teaspoons of coconut oil, so I'm just going to put all of those ingredients out of that vacuum packed bag into the saucepan without actually using any oil because of course there's enough oil there which is just going to cook them efficiently and effectively in the saucepan but also it's going to add some really nice flavour with the sesame which was to say a, two, uh, a teaspoonful of uh, sesame oil give it that nice sort of sweet nutty flavour and of course the coconut oil which is it's not that actually cut it's um, slightly defragranced so to speak from the actual real strong coconut flavor so you can actually use it for a lot of cooking and if you don't actually want the coconut flavor to be in it but it's just a very very mild coconut flavor so that will be really complimentary to this dish so let's bring it on uh, they're looking very nicely marinated in all those ingredients you can see just there Right there is the teaspoon, one of the two teaspoons of the coconut oil, which is more of the solid type that you get that you can spoon out of a jar. And once they're all cooked up, I'm going to eat them with my fingers. So it's more like sort of finger food, but I'm going to really clean my hands with some wet wipes and then also some antibacterial gel that I always keep on the side of my rucksack on a D-ring. As you can see just there. So I'll also be wiping my hands over with that and then wiping my hands dry and getting any of the antibacterial gel residue off my hands with two bits of kitchen roll. Paper towel. So my hands are going to be good to go. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, also two teaspoons of tomato chilli chutney. So that was tomato chilli chutney, <laughs> tomato chilli chutney, um, soy sauce, sesame oil, coconut oil, a little bit of seasoning of pepper but I didn't want to put any salt with it because um, the salt type of texture flavour is in the soy sauce. So there they are. I think I'm going to somehow have to try and drink that sauce. <laughs> so they just slowly cook through. So when they turn a really sort of a solid whitey pink or go from the white should I say to the pink then you know um, the prawns are done. But I just let them because they're quite big as well and they cook slowly to keep them tender. Um, I sort of cook them a little bit longer than what you would normally do for prawns. Normally they're sort of two, three minutes, they're done. But I gave them a good five minutes. So um, yeah, absolutely scrummy yummy. At 11 o'clock at night on this Friday night canoe wild camp. On my stick table, you can see I've placed my two heavy duty gloves just to sort of insulate the base of the saucepan from maybe damaging, sort of if it's still a too hot, I don't want it to melt the um, sort of the non-slip type surface. So when I put the saucepan on there, it's more insulated. But you can see that um, they're really well cooked. Oh, look at that. I've just taken the shell off that one and I just had one. This is the third one. And I'll tell you what, I would say these are some of the best king prawns I've ever tasted. Although I say it myself, it's just the texture. Whether or not because they're um, naturally caught in the oceans, they're not farmed and they're from Argentina. Maybe there's just something, a different flavour to them, I don't know, from your normal sort of king prawns that you might get from the Far East or something, which are still nice. 
as I say, these are absolutely fantastic. These are really nice. Mm. I wish the screen was scratch and sniff so you could smell the aroma of how good these really taste. And what I'll also do is I'll um, eat the juice just like it's a soup and that tastes really tangy, really lovely flavours. The coconut very very slightly just sort of came through without sort of covering all the other flavours. but. This is awesomeness in a saucepan to the max. Yummy. So I've just got the central heating going again. You can see just at the rear edge, I've just risen the earth that I dug out, so you've seen it before. But just a little bit of a reflector, plus as well, sort of from over that direction coming towards me. Uh, has been the breeze, but it's actually died down a bit. But so that's uh, just going to see the evening off now with this nice fire. And I just got out my food box, one of these little long life fruit pots, which is pear and peaches. I think they last for about 18 months. But so I bought these the other day. So I've got two of these, so uh, nice and fresh. Quite cool as well, because obviously the temperature's been a bit cool this evening. So it's as if it's just come out of the fridge. So I've just actually had one of them, and it went down really nice. And it's a bit moorish. <laughs> so I'm going to have the second one while I just watch the flames. Sacred fire space. Now it's just something about the fire when you're wild camping. Something primal. Especially when you can cook on it. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to down this now. Have me fruit pot. <laughs> 